So hello everybody, DevCam number eight. So today, sorry, yes, DevCam number eight and today is the session number eight, eight, eight actually. So today is 28 October, 2021. And uh, we are really happy to be here with you to, to talk about the, the Hollow chain, the coding, and so on and so forth. Now, Saza is going to show you the code, which is the code review, finishing the game, the continue of the game, actually. And then Guillaume is going to show you about the testing in, in, in Hollow chain, try Roma, sweet test, and uh, you will see what kind of a test scenario you can implement in Hollow chain. And like always, after a while, we are going to have a break and most probably QA. That's it. Thank you. And let's go to the next slide. OK, thank you, Hadayat. Uh, one second, I will share my screen. Uh, right, so can you see my screen right now? Yes. OK, good. So uh, during the last session, we have implemented this function, which is called try to close round, which kind of does most of the heavy lifting for our game logic. And this is the function that players are calling regularly after they make a move, uh, trying to close the round. So this is a function which handles closing of every round. So we need to have a branch for closing the last round in the game. And previously, we had this branch which had a dummy code. So uh, this is the change that I have made uh, today. And so instead of just returning game round info, we would be actually ending the game session and then we would be returning the information about this session. So here you can see the call to the function that handles this logic. And I would show you the definition of the function as well. So in order to close the game session, this is the information that we need to have. So first, we need to have the Rust structure, which contains the data about the game session. This is because we would need to use some of the fields of this structure to create the newer version of the game session with updated status. Second, we need to have a header hash of the game session where it's stored. As Guillaume has previously explained, we can only create update chain when using header hash. So this is a crucial piece of information. Next parameter is skipped for now, because this is something that we would only need to send the signal to other players, and we haven't covered signals yet. So in order to make Rust compiler happy, I just skip this parameter writing this underscore instead of the variable name. Next parameter is the last round entry hash, which we would need to uh, update the game session state, uh, because our game session, while once it's finished, it would contain this information. And then the round state is the last parameter, which, uh, yeah, which we actually don't really need. Sorry about this. No, no, we need this. Uh, we need this to calculate the amount of resources, like to get access to the amount of resources. So we are starting closing the game. And the first thing we do is we calculate the game status that would be. Uh, updated. So this is a Rust trick that you can see here, meaning that the value of the variable game status is defined as the result of executing this if statement, meaning that it would be either session state lost or session state finished. And as you can see, we need to save entry hash of the last round in both states so that any player that finds this game session uh, would be able to get the last round without having to go through the entire chain of rounds. If we have substantial number of rounds, that would be very resource, resource efficient. And our logic here for determining the state is very simple. We simply check if the amount of resources uh, that we have in the round is uh, less than zero or more than zero. Once we have the game status that we have calculated, we are able to create the actual Rust structure that would contain all of the information. As you can see, some of the fields like the game owner and game parameters and anchor and players, I am just simply taking from the game session that I have received because these parameters would not be changing anywhere. 
but the game status is the new field. I mean, the value of the game status is changing as well as the scores for the game. One, while we were creating the game session, as you remember, uh, this field was empty, but now it contains the actual information about the amount of resources consumed by every player that is in the game. Now that we have the data that we want to update, I mean, to commit to the DHT, we are making this update on this line. So uh, we are calling the update entry function, passing in the header hash and the value of the Rust uh, structure that we want to commit to the DHT. Uh, once we do this, we need to also calculate the entry hash. And as a reminder, we need to do this because update entry would only return us the header hash. But uh, in order to make this function easy to use, we want to ret return the entry hash as well. So that's why we have to do this step. Uh, now, this is just uh, some debug information that we may have and may not have. I mean, it's just... Uh, Another example of how you can do this. And once we calculated this data, we are returning it to the user interface or whoever is calling this function as a result. So looking back at how this uh, end game function is integrated in the game round, you can see that this is where we are calling it. We are getting the entry hash. And once we have this hash, we are populating the uh, value of the game session hash in the round info. And you can notice that the next action is different. So uh, this is how user interface would know that instead of showing uh, another form for making a move, it has to show that the game has ended and uh, well, a different element would have to be displayed. And that's basically it. So we just written the entire game. It doesn't have validation still, so it's very easy to cheat on it and uh, modify the state in a, in a way that we wouldn't want to have. And we would be covering validation separately. But for now, we have the logic that can be already executed uh, and you can play a full game if you're playing uh, in good faith, I would say. Go to the testing game. We are going to talk about testing right now. Um, but before that, um, I want to introduce one topic which you will uh, encounter many, many times actually in the development of your Holochain application, which is actually upgrading the Holochain application you're using to build uh, your code, right? So uh, Holochain is a rapidly iterating um, um, I guess product. Um, it's it's still on alpha, and they are doing what uh, weekly releases. And both Launcher and Holo are upgrading the Holochain version that they are using periodically. Right? It's not that um, you have to upgrade at every week weekly release. I would advise against that actually because it's it can be a bit cumbersome to to be upgrading every time. But I do recommend to upgrade like once a month, um, since that's going to be like the release cycle more or less that the launcher and and holo and scaffolding like all the tooling around Holochain is going to be upgrading in that in that rhythm. So. Um, how do you do that? How do you upgrade the Holochain versions? Um, well, there are two things uh, important, right? So I have here uh, my um, the DevCam repository, right? Um, there are two important things um, in upgrading your Holochain version, which is one is, is it's the default.nix, oops, here. The default.nix is the one, like if you remember Nix, what it does is uh, build a virtual des uh, development environment with everything you need uh, to be able to code well. And in this case, in Nix, we are declaring the Holochain version that we uh, want to be using in our development uh, environment, right? So that's the, the Holochain version, but then the application that we are building uh, is uh, dependent on the HDK, right? The Holochain development kit, which is upgrading at the same time as the Holochain version is. So the two versions have to match. That's the most important thing, right? So the Holochain binary is what consumes the DNA. If the DNA is of different version than the Holochain binary, then it's not guaranteed to work, right? The two 
versions should be aligned for them to be guaranteed to work. So in the default of Nix, we are specifying the version of Hologen, the Hologen binary, not the version of the HDK we are building with, right? Um, the version of the Holochain HDK that we are uh, building against is specified in the cargo.toml as a normal uh, Rust dependency, right? So you can think of uh, these are the two places that you, you should look for when upgrading your Holochain version. First, the default.nix, which uh, brings up the Holochain binary, then your cargo.tomls, which uh, Packages the DNA and then the DNA and the Holochain binary has to have to have to match versions, right? So how did I add, add, upgrade uh, the Holochain version? So I, if you see here, what we had is something like this, right? Which is um, specifying the Holochain version 107. And every week there's there's a new Hologen version. So 107, next week 108, next week 109, next week 110, sorry, 110. Um, and what we need to do is basically replace this uh, part of the default Nix with all the new hashes for the new Hologen version. Um, and that's going to be cached in Holochain Cachex. So you're, you're, have, you're going to have a, a, like, in some cases, 10 seconds. It will take 10 seconds for you to download the new version, right? So it's very lightweight with Cachex. And Nastasia, for example, has experienced something like 20 minutes as well with Cachex. So it's a bit, uh, it depends on the environment that you have, but it's much, um, much faster than before. Um, because before we had to basically compile the new Hologen version and that would take like a long time. Cool, so where do we get this part of the these hashes for the default Nix? Well, first of all, um, they are here. What I'm going to be looking at is this, um, this, um, this guide, I'm going to send it in the Discord, right? Um, which explains how to upgrade the default that makes. Uh, and first step is find the hashes of the new version of Hologen. This refers to these hashes, right? This one, this one, this one. Um, first of all, they should be here, which is the where the uh, Hologen um, Nix dependencies are built, right? So they should be here. Um, if they are not here, you can ask them. Ask, ask for them around, right? So uh, we are a community of developers and mostly we are copy pasting default on Nix from one another. If everything uh, of that nature fails, you can, if you can find the hashes for this new version, you can uh, build them by, by yourself by following these steps. I don't, I don't want, uh, I don't want to go over these steps right now um, because they are a bit uh, long and cumbersome. Uh, I'm going to send this link to you. Um, and if there are any, any problems, we should um, fix them in Discord. Um, okay, so I did just that, which is uh, copy and paste a default .nix for, for 112 from another repository. And the, the first one obviously got, got it from, from here, this link, right? So what I can do right now, let me exit this and exit everything, right? Can you see my screen um, big enough? Yes, it is, okay. Thanks. So now if I do Nix shell, it's going to actually download everything it needs from Kashix and we will have the new Holochain installed, as simple as that. Right, so we have now Holochain 112. And now I have to go to my cargo tunnel and we had this, right? So I have to upgrade the new version. And then if your zone depends on Holohash, um, which a lot of zones do, um, you have to upgrade its version as, as well. These two um, grades should be aligned in, the, in their version as well. If not, you, you will have some incompatibilities. Um, for now, you have to, um, to put them like this, but in the future, you may 
uh, be able to track this dependency to make it simple. Okay, that's that's as far as I want to go as to upgrading Hologen versions. Any questions here? Yes, I can ask a question. So the, the two places developers supposed to change one inside the cargo tunnel, another one inside the default that needs. Mm -hmm. It is that it is the most, it means it should be the same version. We already know. In the cargo code is going to use in a default Nix OS, it is the environment for CLI, blah, 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 the binary that using for the, as a, as a profile environment. It must, both of them must be in the same version. Yes. Um, if not, it, it can still work in some cases, but it's not guaranteed to work. Um, the reason is a bit complicated because it's basically the way in which the DNA and Holochain are communicating, right? So if that way actually changes, then it breaks. If a Holochain uh, version 107 uh, has a different way of communicating with the DNA than Holochain 106, and we are trying to, to run a DNA with 106, then they are not, not going to, to communicate well with each other. Um, that's what I say, it's, it's not guaranteed to work. And you should, like, if you have some problem while upgrading Holochain versions, that's the first thing you should look into. Um, did you upgrade the cargo tunnel versions and every dependency uh, in your cargo tunnel, like if you have dependencies to other zones or, or things like that, check that first. Because if, if that's the issue, then you're not going to, to be able to, to move forward at all. Thank you. So to review quickly, in a Tomel, the version of Holochain, it is the version that we are building the DNA. We are creating the code. In the default Nix, it is the place that the conductor is supposed to come up so it is supposed to connect and both versions should be at the same level. It means we produce a code that is already supposed to be run using a CLI admin panel and conductor. And that's why both of them, the best option that both of them should be at the same level. That's yeah. it. Yeah, exactly. Thank you. Um, any more questions here? Yeah, I have a question. It looks like hollow hash and the HDK dependencies have different versions. Um, yep. where, where can we find out where, where they match? Right, that's a good question. Okay, so what I do is go inside the Holochain code repository inside the HDK grade, right? So if you have followed, this is the Holochain uh, main repository, the HDK grade, and the HDK depends on hollow hash. So I go here and I say, oh, okay, so it's the K113 depends on hollow hash 12, I12, 11, right? So this is the, the one that, that should, go, should go with it's the K113. Would you please copy and paste the code to me that I can put in this code? Thank you. Mm -hmm. Put it in the chat here, it's easier. As I said in the future, um, I I would like it for I, I, I would like for us to be able to do this and make make it so that the HDK also comes with color hash already already with the version pinned. Um, right now, that's not the case, so we have to to check to do this uh, um, additional check. Um. What I think I saw Connor do sometimes is that he um, adds the dependency, but he then uh, marks it as uh, with a with a star. So he's saying, mm. "I want hollow hash, but give me whatever version HDK is using." Mm. Or won't that work here? Mm -hmm. Yeah, I th that I think that should work. Oh, well, that's going to take. Uh, not 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 so long. Um, what we are doing here, yeah, just what Tim said, basically. <laughs> yeah, thanks, Tim. Yeah, I stole it from Connor. So thank you, Connor, if you're here. 
Any more questions? And this, this pattern of putting a star for the latest version, we cannot use for Holochain, no? You can not use for Holochain because actually your zone isn't depending on Holochain. Right? It's the default.mix that, um, that um, indicates the Holochain um, version. And in Holonix, you mostly, yeah, for sure you cannot do this. Right? Um, if it was the zone depending on Holochain, then you will be able, you would be able to do this. Right, so star is a feature of cargo, really. It's the, uh, give me any any version that you that you need. The default .nix is not cargo related. The default .nix is only uh, nix. So um, no, we cannot do that here. Thank you. Okay. Any other questions? Okay. By the way, if anybody for the new version create a default Nix, please come to forum and notify others. Yeah. And anybody else would love you as a first one to notify a new default Nix. That's great. <laughs> yep. Saving time to for for other people. That may change in the future, but for now, this is what uh, we have to do. Um, okay, and I I just ran before going to testing. I just ran into another issue, which uh, it's useful to actually show, which is okay. I'm in inside the, the new Nick shell um, of the DevCam Game of Commons uh, repository. I'm going to run the tests. Okay, um, oh, it has to compile again. That's a bit weird, but okay. So. Um, after compiling, we get uh, some weird issue in which we see, yeah, let me just show it here. Uh, le let me know if I turn a bit choppy because it's some sometimes I have had that, that experience. You are totally good, go ahead, please. Okay, so um, you see things like this. And it's like, wait, what? So in here, I'm basically simulating what um, the tests do also, which is just run Holochain. The thing is that sometimes the uh, Holochain has an accompanying binary, which is layer key store, right? Sometimes Holonix doesn't seem to um, install correctly layer key store in your environment. So you get these kinds of errors, which is, um, hey, connection refused to layer key store, layer key store client received error, installing layer key store. What Holochain is trying to do here is um, running layer key store. So layer key store is really the, the place in which Holochain um, um, stores uh, private keys and things like that, right? So let's see. Exactly, this is what you are going to get, right? Which which does like actually doesn't make any sense from the perspective of the testing that it's now compiling and trying to run the tests, right? This is what I, I, I wanted to, to show. Um, the reason is that Holochain is trying to run layer key store as a dependency process um, to store the private keys there. Since it cannot find it, it just tries to do the cargo install for you. Right, because the layer key store is not properly installed on the computer, so it's uh, trying to install it directly from cargo, uh, from crates.io, sorry. Right, so this is what you get. Solution, um, easy solution actually is to let it run, let it complete, then you will have layer key store properly installed. This run of the tests will fail, and that's fine. And what you have to do then is rerun them. And then hopefully the layer key store process will be installed correctly in your uh, Nix environment, and you will be able to run the tests correctly. 
Okay, just if if you see this, um, this is the reason. Like, um, hopefully you can work your way around it and not be blocked. Okay, um, now on to testing. Sorry about the uh, the big um, prelude. So I'm going to show uh, two levels. Uh, no, actually two patterns to do integration testing in Holochain and one pattern to do unit testing. In the uh, DevCam repository, you will have the two patterns of doing integration tests, but not the one about doing unit tests. Um, let's start with the uh, normal tests that we already uh, have like th this, these are the tests that we were executing all these all these sessions, right? Which is something called Triorama, right? So these are tests that are written in TypeScript. You could write them in JavaScript as well, but the all, all the tooling is is uh, made for TypeScript at, at this point. So this is uh, the, the easier uh, path is to build build them with TypeScript. And Triorama is uh, basically a framework to be able to boot up conductors on the fly and uh, connect to them and execute functions on them, right? So um, in this case, what we are doing here is just creating a new orchestrator, tri uh, Triorama orchestrator. And the orchestrator is basically, well, what orchestrates all the conductors uh, starting up and booting down and, and these kinds of things. And we are uh, executing the game logic tests on it, right? So let's take a look at, uh, at the uh, game logic tests. Okay, so what this does basically it takes an orchestrator, which is the one that we are passing here. It registers an S scenario, which is really a test. This is nothing more than registering a new test. And then um, it executes the test code. Right? Let's take a deeper look at the test code. So in Triorama, you, you have this, um, and, and this is really boilerplate, the scaffolding tool does it for you. Otherwise, you can go look at different examples to copy paste this first part, right? What this does, for example, s.players, and s is a parameter that we get from uh, Triorama, s.players boots up two different Holochain conductors, which uh, one is Alice player, second one is Bob player. And these are conductors that are, are actually real conductors running on your computer, right? So this is not uh, in memory in JavaScript, but these are real conductors running in, in your computer. But right now these conductors don't have anything installed, right? So what you, uh, we do is install our hub inside the conductor so we can test actually test our hub, right? Um, if we don't install our hub, we are not going to be able to call any of, of, our, of our functions. So how do we do that? Well, I have it is split here inside utils. There is installation and config. Let's take a look into that. So Config is just a uh, default configuration. You could ex specify here uh, different configurations for, for the conductor. For example, if you want to test different scenarios, um, networking scenarios and things like that, you can specify them here in the config.gen. Um, installation, in installation, you define the DNAs or hubs that you want your conductors uh, to, to, to install, right? So here, we are just um, defining a game of commons DNA, which is coming from DNA, work dear game of commons DNA, right? So this is the bundle that Triorama is going to, to receive. And importantly, we have to have this compiled before actually executing the test. Otherwise the, the Triorama won't, won't know what DNA to load. Um, and we are saying, okay, each time that you install this installation configuration, you will install only one agent in this conductor and you will install only this DNA, right? Uh, you could have an application with, with multiple DNAs in it, right? So we have been talking about only having a one DNA, but you could have an application in which you define three, four, five, N DNAs, right? So you would do something like this. 
right? This is an application that contains multiple DNAs and they should be installed as a bundle together um, to be able to work together with each other, right? So this is the way that you would do it. One agent, these are the DNAs uh, of our application. You could also install multiple applications, right? So imagine I, I have to test my, uh, I don't know, my mutual credit application together with another application with Elemental Chat, right? So my mutual credit only works if there is Elemental Chat installed on the PC, but Elemental Chat actually um, is not part of my application. So you would do something like this, right? So one agent, two applications inside one application, this DNA, inside the other application, this DNA. Um, you can also define another scenario, which is, oh wait, but I want to test uh, scenarios in which um, there are two agents in the same conductor running the same DNA, which is not that um, like the only place in which that, that's usual is whole hosting. And I'm not going to go there to explain that, but this, as, as, as far as Hologen is concerned, that's a totally valid scenario. So you would do something like this, right? So this is, first agent, this is second agent. Um, with the, uh, inside the configuration, you can uh, configure um, the, the installation of DNAs or hubs the way uh, you prefer, right? So we are going to stick with the simple, only one DNA. What we do then is call install agents hubs, right? This is from Theorama as well. And this actually returns a list list of agents and this like this is called a destructuring in in javascript for those that of you that are not really familiar but this is just really the same as doing list of agents zero opa zero zero so this structure is going to match exactly what we have here so I want to have the first agent, right? From, from the first agent, I want to be able to get the first DNA. So from the first uh, agent, the first DNA, right? And in JavaScript, another way of expressing that is just doing the restructure that we see here. So now we have a handle uh, for the application. Here, oh, here, important, um, we have Triorama um, connected to conductors, right? So this is uh, like, okay, instead of actually going to the bootstrap or to the proxy that we have been talking about previously, we want to test this in isolation. In, uh, isolation. So let's have uh, Triorama uh, have the two conductors meet each other privately, right? So we don't, uh, connect to other uh, tests uh, that are happening elsewhere with the same DNA hash because we uh, are, test, uh, are a team of developers testing the same application, right? You could have uh, um, collisions in your tests if you are going uh, to the bootstrap service and actually booting up a, a real testnet, right? We, are, we don't want to do this here. We want to share the notes privately. And this is the way that, that you do it. So, again, yep. so let me some ask a question. Hey guys, if you don't like my question, let me know. So uh, generally, let's review what is Alice and Bob when in, in the two lines. Yes, it means right now, we are going to create one conductor with one install DNA as a game inside each of them. By this setup, it means we are going to have a two different conductors. Is that true or we are going to have a one conductor with two installed version? No, these are two different conductors. Okay. Alice player is one conductor, Bob player is another conductor. Okay. And in Alice player, we install one DNA. Yes. Opa. yes. One DNA, right? The definition of DNA, yes. And in the other conductor, we install exactly the same DNA. Yes. But so, it's another conductor. So at the end, we get two agents playing the same game, which is what we want. Yes, that is true. So it means right now in the share environment, we have a 
two different conductor, each of them install the DNA. Yes? Yep, exactly. So what, what's happening in the share all nodes right now? It means what they are going to share to each other. Right. Um, they are going to meet each other, basically. So it means we are going to configure a network, a, a way that they can see each other, yes? Exactly, yeah. With so, this, they are seeing each other. That is great. Without this one, it means if Alice publishes something, Bob cannot see it or Bob cannot host it, yes? Exactly, exactly. Uh -huh. So with this scenario, peer-to-peer -peer communication between conductor also is possible, yes? Yep. Mm -hmm. With then, this, till when this validation are valid, it means when we start setting up for each for each test scenario, we need to create and to regenerate all this setup, or just we just set up once and we are going to create a different test scenario. Um. Ah. Okay. Okay. If I understand the question, it's like okay, this is a test scenario. Mm -hmm. Do we need to do this for every test scenario or yes. only once? Yes, it is right. The, the answer is you need to do this for every test scenario, right? Oh. A test mm -hmm. a test scenario really is just a configuration of conductors and network mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. and uh, execution of uh, functions of those conductors. Okay. It doesn't make much sense to have mm -hmm. two scenarios run mm -hmm. of the same conductor because mm -hmm. then what you will have is mm -hmm. the results of one test will mm -hmm. be affecting the, the other and you don't want that. That is great. It means the test scenario should be a standalone, isolated, totally in the isolated environment that they cannot affect other tests and other tests cannot affect this test. Yes? Exactly right. So uh, can I... Can I jump in here? Please, please. Uh, yeah. So it's conversational. And, yeah. Yeah. So the and we can the orchestrator will take care of all of that. So we define all of our our scenario under one orchestrator. If we want another scenario, we create another orchestrator, and we can just we can run them in sequence, or we can run one at a time, or whatever, and that'll just handle everything. Yep. As far exactly as tear, right. set up and tear down. Okay. Yeah. So you do you do this, right? Oh. Oh, cool. Um, and, and here you say game logic too. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. And uh, and then maybe. and then they all run. Cool. That, that's it, game. I don't have any question. Cool. So um let's do the basic pattern of uh, doing a zone call and let's have the break then. Um, so now here it's a bit convoluted, unfortunately, but we have to do this to get the from the uh, application, right, to the actual cell. And remember, a cell is a combination of DNA hash agent public key, so it's a running DNA. Um, you don't have uh, like a running a DNA cannot run in in isolation. It has to run together with an agent public key, and that's a cell. So we are here getting the cell for Alice and the cell for Bob. And an application is just a set of cells, right? So we are just uh, from the cell list, we are finding the one that corresponds to the DNA we have to test. So, and then we finally have the cell and with the cell, we can start to make the calls, right? So for example, we do alice.call we pass the zone name. So for this DNA, which zone we want to call. And in this case, we have only one DNA, only one zone, which is game logic. So that's going to be game logic here. And in that zone, which function we want to call. And that's going to be in source lib. These are all the functions that are defined are only the ones with its HDK extern, right? So we have to basically copy and paste one of these to determine which function we want to call. And at the end, we want to pass this uh, payload, the parameter, right? And we just pass it like this. Then we await, this is always asynchronous. And with that code hash, we can do things like t dot okay code hash. This will check whether code hash is null, and if it's null, it's going to fail. Uh, you could do also something like this. Uh, 
or something like this. There are, uh, there are different deep equals, I uh, sorry, um, um, tests, asserts that you can write to fit your use case. Uh, these three are the main ones that, that you will use, right? So whether something is equal to another thing, whether something is deeply equal, which is in, in JavaScript, it goes to see all the values inside the, um, the actual object. And in, in this test, finally, what we are seeing is, uh, sorry, is um, for Alice, call inside the zone name, create game code anchor with this game code we are passing here, get the code hash and verify it's not null. This is what we are expressing here. And when we run it after the break, we will see how this goes. So, Nastasia wanted mm -hmm. to say something. Let's go to Nastasia, please. Yep, thank you, Hadayat. Uh, can you see my screen? Yes. Yeah, so before I have shown this lines, uh, this line that has not resources left, but resources taken, that's actually an inattentive bug. I have fixed it already in the repository, and that actually what makes sense uh, in terms of the game. So we want to check that at the last round, we still have the resources left, and we don't care about the amount of resources taken from the perspective of the game status. So that's, that's my short announcement. Thank you, great. So by the way, you already know that if you don't know, it is right now I'm explaining that for each session, we created a one, one branch in the GitHub repository. It means the video is supposed to be synced to a specific branch in GitHub repository. So your, the video and the branch supposed to be synced. So don't forget to change your branch by reviewing each video. It's important. So otherwise, the code makes you confused. So, so far, so good. We started reviewing the test. Guillaume talked about the trirama. And we are going to go back to Guillaume to see what others remain in trirama and others testing environment. Please, Guillaume. Cool. So to finish Triorama, I'm going to be running the uh, tests. Oh, spoiler. Sorry about that. So we are uh, going to be running these tests we have defined here, which is the, uh, which are the ones that uh, we just explained, right? So this should be already familiar to you. Um, this is building the application uh, in, and, and just executing in here, this package JSON, this is what it's running, the scripts test. And this test, what it does is execute the index TS that we have defined, right? So here, ooh, hooray, 11 tests passed, uh, none failed. OK, cool. Um, what other interesting, really interesting and really useful thing you can do here is you can go inside the zones. Let's say that here, and you can add logging. And this will be really, really, really useful for you in the future. So, um, yep, keep this in mind. So, if uh, you can do things like warn, lock, debug, and trace, and first is error, right? And each one of these will correspond to the log level that you can set here in, in Treorama, like this. At the, at the beginning, you can say was unlock, and I'm going to set this at, at word, right? So it's just going to show warn and error. If I set it to log, it's going to show log, warn, and error, right? But I only need a warning to demonstrate it. So I'm going to log something, whatever. I don't really care about it. It's going to recompile this little new line that we set here, and it's going to run the, the tests again. Just want to show you um, how it shows. running. Okay, do you see this? 
So warning clock and it says hi, 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 which is the thing that we put. And it says, okay, this is from lead.rs line 48, right? If I want to output, normally I want to output some value that I'm uh, executing here, right? So I would do something like this, which is actually the same that you can do with print. Ellen. It's actually the same. So um, this is the way that you debug your application and see what's happening inside. Right, so this is for Triorama. Any questions here about Triorama? Otherwise, we are going to switch to the next test environment that you can use. If I have, if nobody has. Okay, I'm gonna go first and waiting also for other questions. So, uh, Guillaume, in this scenario, I saw something like a sleep. What does it mean? And when we should be aware about this one, generally why we need to sleep? when we need to use it. Is there any consideration about a sleep? Yes. Yeah, thanks so much. I forgot about that and I have to explain it for sure. So thanks. Um, sleep really is a function that we defined in our utils. And it's basically a delaying, a waiting 50 milliseconds for the execution of the, of the code, right? So it comes here, it stops for 50 milliseconds and then it continues. Um, this is important in Hologen in cases in which we want to test whether a player is seeing something that another plane has committed, right? So here, it's not that necessary. We could do away with it. Why? Because Alice is creating the game code anchor, and then Alice uh, herself is joining the code. So. Um, if we have created the, the game code anchor here and we are joining the code just after, since it's the same node, it's going to have the game code inside, right? We don't have to wait for anything. But what happens here? Here, oh, actually, the task has a bug. It should be like this. Here, Bob is joining the game, right? So. From one side, Alice created the game code. And then from the other side, Bob is trying to join with that game code. What happens? We have played with the launcher, right? We know that Holochain is eventually consistent. Um, not everyone is going to have the data just after Alice has created it. So we have to sleep. This is the tool that we have right now to wait for data from Alice to be gossiped to Bob, right? And you may think, hey, this is not deterministic. And I would say, yes, that's right. Um, it's not the most elegant solution. There are a couple more additions that can be made to this uh, so that it's much more reliable. But for now, this is what we have. If you don't put the slip here, let's try it out. In principle, it should fail. Um, when do you have to use sleep? The test is basically, does someone has, uh, is, is, if some agent has created some entry or some data that another agent has to see, that's when you have to sleep, right? And as you see, one failed, and the one that failed is, uh, uh, um, What's this? Alice created new session. Where is this? Alice created this new session. Oh, it's interesting. We need another sleep here. Ha. Oh, right. We need another sleep here. So actually, this one has gone really fast in gossiping, but this one didn't. So here we are starting game session with code which requires both players, uh, the profiles from both players, right? So we have to sleep here actually, after Bob uh, joined the game, because now it's Alice who has to see both data, right? So let's say 50. Let's hope that this passes. Yep, 
now it passes again, right? This is the, um, the, the thing that you have to do whether data committed in one conductor has to be seen by another conductor. Thank you. Thank you, great. So it, uh, is it telling us that the trirama is an integration test? Yep, exactly. Triorama is not for unit testing. We are going to see what we, we can use for unit testing. And this is a distributed system and we have to test the integration test, need to test the distributed system. And distributed systems are uh, really non-deterministic by nature just for the fact that they have network calls and networks can behave badly or have some latency, et cetera. That is great, thank you. So yeah. As, as Guillaume mentioned, as it is integration test, you need to think about all the scenario. One node or one agent is, is sending something to DHT. We need to wait, but they're supposed to be see, but they're supposed to see that, that, that entry or element. And you need to simulate the process of all the step and then write your scenario. It is the nature of the trirama. Always, don't forget about the sleep, which is really important. And I already personally faced this experience that for some reason, I put two, two, three seconds. And after a while, test didn't work. And I spent a little bit time, I recognized, aha, uh -huh, for any reason, maybe a networking or maybe the memory of my testing environment, the speed of propagation was a slower. So I changed the sleeping time for two, three seconds and the tests are passed. If somehow your tests are not passing, don't forget also to look at the sleep. Also don't, don't be confused actually. Take care of this sleep. 